Okay, in this presentation, we are looking at a hypothesis test. So essentially, let's just read it out. Two samples of students are randomly selected uh, from two IT training companies. Okay, so it's a two sample test. Okay, so we have one company called Echelon and the other company called Delta Tech. Okay, and essentially what we're looking at here is some sort of uh, a well-known IT competency exam. Okay, so they're both doing the same test in two different train with two different training companies. Okay, and what we have here is the mean and standard deviation of the marks from both companies okay now just actually just a sort of remark there's a sort of we have to sort of work on the basis that everything sort of uh, is normally distributed which might be a little bit of a stretch actually if you actually look at these how these um, exam marks but just let's go with it just let's say uh, for the time being that the normal distribution is uh, all, all that uh, assumption is uh, observed Okay, so we have the uh, 14 at Delta Tech and 12 at Echelon. Okay, so the combined sample size there is 26. Okay, small sample. Okay, that's the first key tell there. Okay, now the mean and standard deviation is the sample mean and sam sample standard deviation of those two groups. So that we're going to use that in calculating our test statistic. Okay. Now, test the hypothesis that both groups of students, on average, obtain the uh, same mark in the IT exam. Not just the twelve, not just this group of twenty-six. Altogether, throughout the course of all the exams, that on average, Delta Tech and Echelon uh, teach the same sort of quality. Okay. Um, so use a significant significant level of five percent. You may assume that any required assumptions have been validated. It might be a bit of a stretch. So, so anyway, normally distributed and so on. So uh, alpha here is equal to five percent. Okay. Formally state the null and alternative hypothesis. So let's start off. That looks a bit weird. Okay. Let's just go to the next page. There we go. So uh, step one is formally state the null and alternative hypothesis. Okay. So step one, hypotheses. Okay. Now H zero is that the the uh, the average for Delta Tech is equal to the average for Echelon. Okay. So uh, the alternative is that they are not equal to each other. Okay. Sorry, that's being not equal to. Now we're going to. Re I'm just going to sort of rewrite these. As essentially, we have it in terms of. Also, actually, just so sort of important. Um, same marks for both companies. Okay, just write in a little description. Okay, about what the null hypothesis is telling you. So, uh, difference. In market in the average mark okay for both between companies okay so just write out something that sort of says suggests that they're both companies the same sort of standard or get the same marks versus that they the alternative hypothesis that there is some sort of difference in quality in the teaching okay so now Written description helps okay and a mathematical description now I'm just going to slightly change the mathematical description so rather than mu d my, uh, equals mu e, I'm going to write it in terms of mu d minus mu e equal to zero. Okay, the, the difference is zero, and I'm going to sort of rewrite the alternative hypothesis in saying that it is not zero. Okay, the reason for that is it sort of makes our uh, expected f difference of the null hypothesis crystal clear. So the expected difference of the null hypothesis is zero. Okay, so the set next thing now is the test statistic. Okay, so step two. Now this is where all, we're going to be doing all the work, the test statistic. Okay, now there's a structure to the uh, confidence in, or the test statistic. I'm going to sort of skip past it this time. Well, actually, I have a point estimate minus uh, the expected value under the null hypothesis. All over the standard error. That is the general structure of our uh, test statistic. Now let's look at this. What is our t uh, under the null hypothesis? We have 
a difference of 24 minus 22.5. So under the null hypothesis, we observe a difference of 1.5 marks. So it is 24 minus 22.5, which is 1.5 minus 0. Now the standard error, this is where we have to go to the back of the exam paper here. Let's go down here. Oops. Yeah, go to the back of the exam paper. Now, you have to be careful here because, uh, first off, it's confidence intervals or hypothesis tests, or you have to just be careful with what you're doing. Okay, so my there we go. Uh, next, go page back again. So two small independent samples. That's the one we're going to use here. Okay, so. There's a good bit of number crunching here that we have to do. So first off, look at this sp squared uh, over one uh, times one over uh, n1 plus one over n2. So it's the sample size is one over 14, one over 12. Okay, but we have to calculate it by this pooled uh, standard deviation. Okay, or pooled variance. So this is important. This bit calculating the pooled variance. So pooled. Variance has to be calculated first before you calculate the standard error. Okay, so that's it. So it's s one s squared times n minus one plus s two squared over uh, times n two minus one. Uh, okay, so anyway, let's just actually do it out. Let's not talk about it. So let's just sort of um, go back to our sheet here. So pooled variance is. Uh, S1 squared times N1 minus 1 plus S2 squared times N2 minus 1 all over N1 plus N2 minus 2. Okay, so the variances are as follows. Let's go back to our question here. I have to sort of move things around here a bit. One more. Okay, I'm trying to get this done. It is the software. We've gone too far now. It's uh, there's too much software running here at the same time. Um, ten and nine. Okay, so the variance is a standard deviation is ten and nine. So for Delta Tech, ten and nine. Okay, so ten squared is one hundred. Nine squared is eighty one. So ten squared times thirteen plus 81, well, times 11, all over, um, actually, let's just check that I get that in the right order, yeah, all over 14 plus 12 minus 2, okay, so what we have here is 100, uh, 10 squared is 100, so what we have here is 1300 plus 891, all over um, 24, okay? A little bit of calculator work, 2291 over 24, that is just approximately uh, 95.46, there thereabouts, okay? So, Let's go back to our, so that's 95.46, and let's just check, what do we do now? Okay, so 1 over n plus 1, oh, sorry, 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2. Okay, uh, multiply that out. So essentially what we're doing here is we're using this bit here now, the top bit. Okay, so let's go here. Square root of sp squared, that's our pool variance, over 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2. So, bit of calculator work. Square root of 95.46, all of 1 times 14 plus 1 times 12. So, a little bit of calculator work. I'm going to pause it and just do that. That is equal to... Square root of uh, 95.46 times 0 0.1547, 
and the way I have it done out my calculator might not get the exact same answer I get the square root of 14.773 and so we're close enough now 14.773 get the square root of that is 3.84 okay now 3.843 okay that's what I'm using a sort of a, a calculator that works to higher precision so you might get slightly different answers because if you're rounding it down a little bit differently okay so 3.843 that is our standard er error okay that's the whole job done okay so there's a good bit of work to this so the calculation is standard error so it is 3.843 okay uh, so that's 1.5 over 3.843 and it's, I think you might tell straight away that this is going to be a very small test statistic but let's work it out so 0.3903 okay that is my test statistic test statistic so that's the test statistic done. Now I'm going to calculate the critical value. Now the critical value is so we're using alpha equals 0 0.05. It's a two-tailed test. Okay, and the degrees of freedom. It's a small sample. That's actually important to sort of mention. Small combined sample. Okay. Now this is actually something to just check. The degrees of freedom when you have two small samples is n1 plus n2 minus 2. Okay, so it's minus 1 for both samples. That is equal to 24. Okay, so that is the degrees of freedom we're using for this procedure. Okay, so um, yeah, that is it really. So let's just check that. That is. I make that to be the test, the critical value, I make that to be 2.063, okay? It might be rounded up to uh, 2.064 in some tables, actually, so it's 2.063 or 2.064. So finally is the decision rule. It, um, is the absolute value of the test statistic greater than the critical value? Is is not 0 0.3093 greater than 2.063 no fail to reject null hypothesis okay there's not enough evidence to say that one is different to the other echelon delta tech we can't uh, discern if one is better than the other okay so that's a two sample two small independent samples hypothesis test